man, I'm so happy with that advice, and it came to me on the spot. Go Azrin, go me. <laughs> so today's vlog is starting quite a bit later than normal. It is about 1 p.m. or two minutes before one. I'm about to start teaching some French in two minutes. Um, thought I'd pop on quickly to start the vlog off. And um, so this morning here, I did a couple things. Mowed the lawn, number one. And number two, I was starting to look at, um, I was looking at some different, uh, a couple things on my fi personal finances. Um, usually uh, I look at things at a minimum once a month, but it's been about, about a month and a half since I have. So I had to, had a bunch of stuff that was lagging that I sort of had to get done. So got those done this morning. Today is a day that, that is literally all about slang. Like we have all these different Chinese flashcards with slang terms, English flashcards with slang terms, like I've got Spanish things, French, like all about slang. And on top of that, this evening I'm running a French and Spanish group lesson all about slang and some French in French and Spanish. So lots and lots of slang filled day. And I actually did an English lesson on slang too. And I learned Chinese slang. Oh my goodness, so much slang. Let's start our 60 seconds of slang, and we're going to talk about a single slang term in English. And this slang term is a couch potato. Couch potato is someone who is extremely, extremely lazy. And um, so for example, I could say, wow, Jack is a real couch potato because all he does all day is just sit and just really do nothing all day. Typically a couch potato is someone who does sit at home for long periods of time and just watches TV, plays video games, etc. So when you study or when you speak multiple languages, period, it is actually, you will often mix them up. Like even myself, I speak English, French, and Spanish very, very fluently. And yet, literally, if I start speaking Spanish and then I go into speaking French, I will definitely mix some Spanish in, or there'll be tendencies to mix Spanish in because my brain was in Spanish mode. The only thing that I can tell you is that it gets better, right? As you get stronger in the languages and as your brain gets used to switching between the two languages, you will tend to switch and mix the two languages up less and less and less. I almost view it like working out. It's kind of like you're working out different muscles in your brain. And what's gonna happen is eventually your brain's gonna learn to develop the muscles to, di to distinguish the two languages. But that just comes with time and practice and effort. One thing you could do while you're studying, and this could actually limit it, is you can actually compartmentalize your studying. So for example, German is every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Russian is every Wednesday, or excuse me, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Compartmentalize it so that you're going your brain knows eventually you train your brain to thinking, oh, it's Monday, this is the German day, or this is the Russian day, or whatever I said, and, comp and really separate them and draw a hard line between the two. I think that actually might be a really good way to do it until your brain learns to be able to separate them successfully most of the time. Man, I'm so happy with that advice, and it came to me on the spot. Go Azrin, go me. <laughs> oh my goodness. In Mosso, in many, 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 if not most countries, it's typically like a, what's the English word? A uh, huh, uh, waiter. However, in Spanish, in Spanish, in Colombia, it has a different meaning, which is like your lover. For example, if you're married, oh, goodness. Goodness. if you're married and you have, and like you are having an affair, es tu mozo, es tu moza. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's your, it's your lover, it's your amante. Amante is the other word in most other countries. Another one would be copete. You said Colombian? Colombia. Uh, Colombia? Like 99% of it's Colombia, yes. Here's another one, copete. What is copete? Well, in a lot of countries, copete means bangs, like your, in your hair. However, in Chile, copete means an alcoholic drink. I just finished teaching a drop-in Spanish lesson and overall I think it went pretty well. This is the first time I've tried doing that and so it was a brand new experience for me. I was actually a little bit nervous and excited going into it. Um, the number one thing I was afraid of going in was you don't know who's going to show up. Could be an intermediate speaker, could be an advanced speaker, like 
anyone could show up. And so like the challenge I had going into the lesson was how the heck can I make sure that the lesson content that I'm going to teach is suitable for all levels. And um, I think for the future, the number, the kind of the big thing I want to now push for is can I get like more than two people there? I want to have like an a four to, I mean, not even four, probably a, I would say a four to six person range is how many I want there every week. Ideally, probably five to six even now that I'm talking this out because I think that would be very positive in terms of income. That's a good cash flow coming in, like extra cash basically, which is which is just great. And the other thing that I really like about that is it's a lead source, right? If you have these people coming in to drop in lessons, new people or people that are coming, it's, it's potential customers for you to actually section off into a private or semi-private environment where you can actually make a little bit more cash on it. So um, kind of where my head is at. Anyway, I'm gonna head home. I have some more work to do as per every evening, every night, and I will talk to you guys. Um, yeah, talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye for now. So I realized that uh, in my whole, you know, self-employment around languages, really where my love lies is on the teaching side, on the language learning side even more. I love that learning stuff. I love talking about phonetics and all that. Um, I'm more interested in like talking about languages <laughs> with other people. And interestingly, I'm actually, I actually think talking about languages and studying languages learning, I'd even say that's slightly primary secondary is teaching and then really the third thing i don't know if it's if it's like in third place but below those two is a lot of the marketing tasks that i have to do which is quite interesting i mean i think i've known that all the time on the days where i have to do lots and lots of marketing in a like or lots and lots of marketing tasks in a in like a big block in a chunk of time those are the days where i feel a little bit more stressed a little bit more drained of energy so yesterday for example you guys saw the vlog i was quite stressed out as you guys saw um, and I think that was one of the big reasons. It was a big, big marketing focus. I was already feeling some pressure of finding some more students, etc., etc. And I actually like marketing. I like a lot of the marketing stuff that I have to do, to be perfectly honest. Um, it is something I enjoy, but not, not anywhere near the amount that I enjoy, like let the language stuff, right? Like the language stuff, actually, the language stuff drives me and gives me energy. So days like today, I'm feeling like on fire. So I don't really know why that matters right now, but that feels like a very significant little discovery or like realization. Um, and it feels very important to me right now. And we'll see if that plays into things in the future. But as of right now, it just feels important to, to talk about and get out there and, and, and yeah, bring attention to it.